So I was reading somewhere, um, or listening to a blog the other day that was just saying that uh, artists should really stop doing those time-lapse demonstrations of, you know, doing paintings because it gives people the wrong idea. It makes them think that it's a lot easier to paint than it actually is when it's sometimes can actually be very painstaking work. I mean, I'm a, a fast painter. People have always told me that I paint quickly compared to who, I don't know, but it doesn't seem very quick to me. Um, in fact, one of the things I've been dis discovering this year is the more paintings I do, the slower I get. Because I guess I get better at it all the time and then I discover other things I can do. So if you look back at some of my earlier paintings of birds, you can see that there's not as much detail in the feathers and as I've gone along, um, I get more and more detail. Um, and also even in, in the furniture, you know, I enjoy doing patterns like this. Um, and then I stand back and, and look at them and I really enjoy seeing, you know, a beautiful piece of furniture come to life. Um, and sometimes it surprises me, you know, because you're up close to something sometimes. You paint, um, I paint quite up close because, you know, I can't see from a huge dis distance with um, a long-handled brush. Um, it'd be a lot more impressionistic if I was doing that. I'm telling you that right now. Um, yeah, so I end up being quite close. And probably the older I get too, you know. My eyesight's changing and I have to get up quite close to be able to see the detail that I want to be able to see. Mind you, one of the wonderful things about painting is that you don't have to put everything in and the mind of the viewer makes up what's not there, what that viewer expects to see. And that's... Um, it's part of the magic of painting. You know, you can suggest something or even leave it out altogether and the person who's viewing it will see a face where you haven't actually painted one but where they expect to see one or that sort of stuff. It's amazing what the brain can do. And it's great for artists because it means that you don't necessarily have to paint everything in. Um, you can suggest it and let somebody's mind and imagination do all the rest. That's um, fabulous. I don't do enough of that. I admit, I probably paint too much in. A lot of the paintings that I really admire in other people are really very different to my own. Yeah, like, um, I can really admire um, the use of colour and abstract, for instance. And the way somebody puts paint on. Uh, um, I love it when other artists use really thick, luscious paint and I think to myself, oh, I should really sort of, you know, trowel it in a lot thicker myself, but then I just end up doing what comes naturally. And... Um, Sometimes that's a lot easier, I think. When you're younger, you can probably, I don't know, try things out more. Be willing to um, just see what happens when you fight against your natural instinct. But at some stage or other, you just realise, oh, it's all too hard to do that. I might as well just do 
follow my own instincts, do what comes naturally and do it to the best of my ability and just see where that takes me. So um, this is where it's taking me to lots of detail and patterns and I think I start every year with an idea of okay this is this is what I'm, I'm doing this year this is what I want to concentrate on. I suppose a little bit like an athlete who might say well okay I'm now going to concentrate on you know how fast I can run or you know the use of my legs or you know you concentrate on on one thing you think okay I'm going to try and improve that so this last year I've been concentrating more on tone which is the light and dark and making figures stand out against a complicated background which is you know it's not always straightforward when you have a lot of pattern and you have a lot of colour and you have to devise ways to, to make your, your subject, which is in my, most cases a bird, how to make it stand out. And of course I do all sorts of coloured birds, not just black and white birds. And so I've been doing, you know, with the colourful backgrounds, you know, playing around with different ideas about how to do that, more muted backgrounds, or I try to even though the background's a different colour, I might try to, to make them the same amount of light or dark, you know, the same kind of tone, so that they flatten and the subject comes out in front. Um, or it might be the colours that I use, rather than the lightness or darkness. It might be that I, I find a contrasting colour. So I'll often go to sort of colour theory and um, try to find, often try to find the exact opposite on, you know, the colour wheel to make it stand out in a, in a, you know, what they call chroma, which is the colour sense, rather than just on tone, the light and darkness of it. So there's that and there's, you know, sometimes I do it by adding more detail so that you know, the figure in the foreground is very solid and then I keep adding more and more lines to the background to sort of what I feel like it's harmonising it and making it more of a whole so there's less contrast in the background um, because it's been harmonised by more and more lines and so the object in the foreground stands out more. So there's all those sorts of tricks that I've been concentrating on this year, which I'll keep concentrating on because, you know, every time I do a painting, I'm playing with some sort of idea. So with this one, it's going to have a um, sort of a, a cherry blossomy kind of background to it. So it'll have a kind of a slightly Asian Chinesey feel. And um, originally this plinth that I'm painting the bird on, um, and I've used it in another painting as well because it's really nice and I like the pattern of it, but this design that I'm painting now was originally blue and white, but because I know I'm going to go for a blue in the background, unless I change my mind, um, I'll go in a blue in the background, I wanted something contrasting, so I've used a red, so we'll see what that looks like be fun. Anyway. It could be quite like meditation doing this. You know, when I'm not talking to myself and I'm just listening to a podcast or half listening to a podcast. I'm just doing this. It's, um, it's very calming. But sort of you hyper focus and you can just lose days on end just painting and getting absorbed into it and then you think what another week's gone it's Christmas already and it is indeed Christmas already in a couple of days so